Yes, you can record it on whatever computer you're in. Oh, we're, we're streaming live. Yeah, we are. <laughs> we got three minutes to cut up. <laughs> you nobody on yet. Oh, let me go ahead and get it here. So. You can record it on whatever computer you're in. So I can go ahead on and get it. Oh, there we go. All right. Let me turn my volume down now so I don't interrupt nothing. And I'm going to post it up. So hopefully I can see. Yeah. I can see from here with no glasses on. I can, read, I can read what's on your screen with no glasses on. Awesome from here. I can't go too much further. All this to avoid uh, <laughs> the glare in my glasses. Right. Uh, that's so silly. It's weird. It's still weird looking at myself on this stuff. And the delay yeah. in this video, in this video, it's hilarious. Now at home, she working. Working. Yeah. Yep. She never stays home even when she ain't working. <laughs> That's what they do. Am I going in and out again? He said she never stay home if she ain't. Oh, working. okay. I didn't know if you heard me or not. I didn't know if you heard me. I was like, "That's what they do. That's how they do." Yeah. All right, we got some people coming on. I see four people. Who's on? Do you see any anybody? Not yet. Good evening, whomever you are who has joined. Hi, not yet. Say hello so we know who you are when you come on. Is two, that's me and you, and then there's two more. <laughs> so yes. Got two with an audience of two so far. <laughs> I just can't see who the two are. Brandy. I see Brandy. Hey, Brandy. You see Brandy. Hey, Brandy. I don't see Brandy, but hey, Brandy. <laughs> Whom else? Whom else? Y'all say hi. Wave at us. Do something. I can't see y'all. It's not on. It's not one. All right. It says I can share it. How do I share it? And not do a watch party. Uh, it says, hey, let yeah, me share. And you can share like to a post, say write post. All right. Let me see if it'll let me. I don't know. I don't, I'm not that. Y'all know I'm not the tech, technical person. I don't know. I can't do it. Lydia, I just hit share. It doesn't it say says, share. Look. At the bottom? <laughs> no. What is wrong with your phone? Don't See, be talking about my iPhone. My mom. Hey, Miss Pam is watching. Hey, Miss Pam. Hey, Miss Waters. Mama's watching. Hey, Miss Pam. 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 All right. I don't know what's wrong with this, but it is 701, and we were already going okay. around. What is this? Episode seven. Number seven. seven. Number seven. We're going to run out of fingers soon. I'm going to have to use Roman numerals. <laughs> Five, <laughs> six. <laughs> Look at cards and say, like, this is episode number. Oh, like in the boxing ring. You're right. Yes. Yes. Hold it up. <laughs> <laughs> All right, there's a trade of press. That's something that's that's a trade of press moment. Right. Yes, yes. All, All right, right, well, ladies, thank you all so far who's joined. We are excited about tonight. We're gonna get started. Yes, yes, welcome Forgive everybody. Welcome to our my internet connection is all wonky tonight, so I hope you'll be able to hear me clearly. And I'm not Tanya. moving in slow motion. Who are you waving to? Tanya. Oh, I don't see Tanya. I see Tanya. Hey, Tanya. I don't know. <laughs> she says, ladies, a hey. hey. Oh, so I'm the lady behind you. Do you see ladies? Uh-huh. I 
I see it. Hey, Deacon is Thomas. Uh, Minister. Ooh. Hoo -hoo. Minister Thomas is on. Yes. Yes. Uh -huh. We're excited about that. Thanks for watching. Thanks for joining us, you all. Thank you for checking up on us on our seventh episode. It's going to be another, I promise, another powerful, amazing, jaw-dropping testimony. Do you hear me? Yes. Yes. Yes, yes, yes. So we are super excited. So tonight, Elder White's going, or John is going to pray. I've got the scripture, share a little testimony, and we'll bring our guests on. Y'all know how we do. You're getting used to our flow a little bit now. Yes, yes. They're with us. They're here with us. So that's where we're, hey, Pastor Drummond just joined us. Ah, shout out, Pastor. How you doing, sir? <laughs> Pastor oh, Yes. Yes. Thank you for joining us. Please stick around and hear the awesome testimony that's going to be coming up. Please do. Please do. Sister Gina. I know. I saw Sister Gina. We miss you, Sister Gina. We love you. We miss y'all at New Birth. My gosh, we miss them. God, yes. we miss y'all for real. We got to do yeah. something with this COVID so we can get together again. Yeah. We just have to meet in somebody's parking lot. <laughs> <laughs> all right let's get started we don't want to prolong yes. the hour yes let's all right let's let us pray father god in the precious name of jesus father it's once again we come before you god we just come to you god excited about tonight god we come to you grateful we are just thankful oh god that you allow us to come together one more time oh god to tell of your goodness father and father we just ask you god to remove every hindrance spirit god we come against all technical uh, technical issues god we pray that internet connections will stay in place oh god and we'll be able to hear and see clearly oh god and everyone will be able to receive what is being said on tonight father i ask you god to just move by your spirit oh god father we ask god to forgive us of everything that we have done that was not pleasing in your sight father we don't want anything that's hindering our communication with you on tonight, God. So we just ask you to have your way. Bless those that are joining. God, we pray, Lord God, that someone's lives will be touched and changed and encouraged and uplifted. God, we ask you to bless our guest on tonight. We ask you to just touch him, oh God, and just use him by, for your glory, oh God. We just give you glory, honor, praise, and we're so grateful for this platform to share of your goodness. We give you all honor and praise. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. 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 And our scripture, y'all know it, Psalms 105 and 1. Give thanks to the Lord and proclaim his greatness. Let the whole world know whole what world. he has done. Yes. Yes. The whole yes. world. Let everybody know. So yes. super grateful yes. for this platform to be able to let the whole world know on the world wide web. <laughs> to let the whole world know what he has done. He has done great things, and that's more than a song, y'all. Yes. He has truly done great and amazing and mighty things. So I'm, I, I'm going to go right into my testimony while I'm going chit-chatting anyway. Mm -hmm. And I could, you know, you guys, I just, and I don't know if I've said this before, but I'm just going to bring it up again. I am grateful to be working. I know I mentioned about our church and everybody being essential and everybody working, hey, co-pastor, and nobody losing their job. And, you know, though we're small, God is still sustaining us. So y'all, I am grateful to be working. Um, for those of you who don't know, I've worked for bb &T for 20 years, and my current role is a financial wellness consultant. So I go out and I go to businesses and nonprofits and you know, organizations, and I talk to the employees about budgeting and saving, and, and it's a sales position. So it's about, you know, come on, join BBNT. We have great, you know, benefits for you, but, you know, we want to help you build a better future. And COVID hit, and I've been working from home since March the 16th, but mm -hmm. I've been working not in the same capacity, not in the same way. You know, the Lord allowed other projects to come up for my team and I to work on. And, you know, though I feel like I have worked harder now than I do in my real job that I get paid to do, I put in more hours, more stress and more sweat equity. <laughs> I do that. Uh, 
and yes, I am working much harder now, but, but, but I am grateful because it could have been a thing that, well, you can't go out, you can't go to see businesses. So we're just going to do away with the program. And God said, not so. So I am super grateful, super grateful. And not only, you know, as you know, we're working on, um, uh, small business loans right now. And as that program ends on June 30th, there's already other programs that they have, you know, ready to assign us to. So I'm super, super beyond grateful to be working and to be doing anything that the Lord allows me to do. I might, you know, I might not be here forever. You know, I might not be a BBNT employee forever, but I'm grateful that I'm a BBNT employee right now. And it's going to open mm-hmm. doors for me to do other things. So that's the kind of God we serve. Praise him. Sustainer, praise him for being a sustainer. Amen. Amen. So my testimony is a little different. I, I, I'm, I am grateful for my job. I'm grateful to be able to work from home. It's not as stressful at all. Very uh. laid back. <laughs> <laughs> yes, I must say. Yes, yeah, she got but, it good, y'all. <laughs> I tell you, I, phew, the Lord has been good, but um. My, my testimony is just, I'm so grateful for, um, how God loves us so much that he won't leave us to ourselves Oh yeah. and how he shows us that we're in places that we didn't think that we were in. Like we are not where we thought we were. Mm -hmm. So I'm grateful for the word on yesterday. If anybody watched, um, our live from living word church, our church page and co-pastor white preached and, she just continued from Bishop's message on last week. Bishop's uh, message um, uh, message was, we matter to God. And co-pastor's message this week was, does God matter to you? Yes, y'all, that was good stuff. And, and initially I'm like, yes, God matters to me. I love God, you know, he's my all in all. He's, he's my first, my last, my everything. But as she continued in the message, as she continued in the message, I realized that the person that I say I love the most, I have been neglecting. Wow. And I had been focusing on things that I had been praying for that I want to happen in my life that had not happened yet. And I was just so focused on that, focused on that. And I was literally pushing God to the side. And it truly convicted me. And it just made me realize and think that, you know, and as I, I had talked with you earlier, um, Lydia, God is not going to send anything or anyone. And I talked to this, I think I talked to Karen too, that is going to, that he knows is going to take his place in your life. Very if true. you're not in a position where he is first, mm-hmm. then nothing or no one can come. He, well, he's not going to send anything where things can come that you think are God sent that really aren't. But if they're taking his place in your life, it's not from him. That's right. Very and true. And you have taken, and if he did send it, you have taken something that he blessed you with and put it in his place. And that's not God's intention. So I'm just grateful that he showed that the word really convicted my, my, my spirit yesterday and convicted my heart that I need to prioritize more. You know, um, work can't come before God. Now work can come before church. Don't get it twisted. It's a difference. Work can come before church, but work can't come before God. Before God. Friends can't come before God. Your prayer partner cannot come before God. No. The people, and I was in this thing, I did my, we do prayer every morning, sometimes in the afternoon, but we pray every day together. Okay. But that cannot take the place of your alone time with God. That does not satisfy, that does not satisfy your, devo- your true devotions to God for the day. Mm-hmm. And so I, I, I felt convicted and I said, Lord, okay, I got to get this back in order. It's got to be you first and then everything else second, right. you know? So I just thank God for that word. I thank God for him convicting me. And I'm not sure, you know, if anybody else is convicted, praise God. But I just know that I just thank God that he loves me so much that he wants me to himself. He, yeah. he, loves, he loves me so much. This is the only man that truly wants me to himself, you know? That's right. He wants a one-on-one with me. He wants a one-on-one with you. Mm-hmm. So just remember, you know, put God, leave God where he's supposed to be first and then everything else comes. And then watch how God blesses and watch how God moves. And I've experienced this before. You know, we feel like we're in a dry place, 
but we actually put ourselves in the dry place. God ain't going nowhere. He did not move. Mm -hmm. We put ourselves in the dry place. And so that dry place means that you become comfortable not praying. You become comfortable not reading your word. You become uh -huh. comfortable not doing your devotion. You become comfortable not communicating with God. That puts you in a dry place. Yes. That's not something he did. You did it. Yes. So I just need to get resaturated. I just need to be resaturated all over again with God's presence. And that is my endeavor to keep him first at all times. So that's my testimony for today. I'm just glad for deliverance. Glad for conviction and deliverance. You know, something God always wants to do is to speak to us. And sometimes, you know, we get in a service, we, you know, we get that moment, we get the corporate message, but God wants to speak to us individually. He wants that quiet time. He wants us. He wants yes. to have that relationship, that intimate relationship, not just the the wham, bam, thank you, ma'am. God is what wants more than a one night stand. <laughs> exactly exactly seriously exactly. And, and you know we treat god like a one night stand we get we that one good service good feeling we get our shout out we had a high time and we like all right jesus i'm good till bible study and we get in there we get a little word and we think we know a little more and we like all right god i'm good till next service and we treat god like a one night stand ouch 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 so yes that is something that i had to they say that leave, you know, you get your quick fix, leave your money in a nightstand. That's what we do. We leave our little offering. We leave our like, little offering on a nightstand. See? And then we go home and it's right back to the same old thing, same old routine. There's no change. Yeah. And God knows your heart. When you come to the altar and you're asking God to forgive you, you're repenting, He knows your heart. So He knows that you're really sincere about that. And don't, and it can't be just one or two days after that you're going to read. You, it's got to be a consistent thing. Every this is a consistent day. walk Every with day. God. Every day. Look Amen. at me. So as you guys can probably yeah. see, our guest is joining us. Oh, Elder Jesus. Teron Trader. Elder Teron Trader. <laughs> What's up, bro? We can't, can't hear you. hear you. You on mute. You got to join audio. You see it? I can't get it. Can you Did see you join it? audio? He <laughs> Still can't hear you. Let's see. He's not muted. No. No. Do you, do you when you join, did you see a thing that says join with computer audio? Look to the left of your screen. You should see a microphone with mute under it. Your little icons across the bottom. There, there she go. There's our sister to the rescue. <laughs> she might, if, if that's not Celia's face right there. Yes, oh my gosh, <laughs> English. <laughs> Mm-hmm. Yes. Just give us a second, God. Just hang in there with us. We're gonna get it straight. Yes, hang in there with us. Thank you all again for joining us. We are so grateful that you guys are watching. Thank you for hanging in there with us. Thank you for joining us on our seventh episode again. Yes. We're excited about this, y'all. So excited about this. Oh, Deacon Yule is watching us. Sam, hi, hi, Karen, hey, Hunter, Robin. hi, Miss Brenda, Robin, Robin is watching. <laughs> Thanks for watching, Robin. <laughs> That's my coworker, my former coworker, still my friend, still my friend. <laughs> While we get our, our little technical difficulties worked out. It's coming, but just be encouraged to allow God to speak to you. Never be too busy for God. You feel like yeah. you can't hear him. You don't know, you know, what he's saying to you next. Make time to hear from him. Quiet, get yourself in a quiet place every once in a while. You know, spend those few moments just listening because we talk to God all the time. Yes. We got our list. 
got our laundry list of God go here. It's like we telling God like God's our our little um personal assistant. God go to the nursing home. God go to the jail. God go to the hospital. God do this. Save my family. Touch here. Move here. Send this. Pay this. Yes. <laughs> you know we got a whole list of stuff we want God to do, but. You know, let God talk to you because he might have a list of stuff he wants you to do. Exactly. Yes. Mm -hmm. So be a listening ear to God. Yes. Yes. But you can hear that list. You can hear that list of what God wants you to do. And I promise it'll be good for you. I promise it'll be good for you. I'm not saying it won't be scary sometimes. I'm not saying it won't be like, Lord, are you serious? (laughs) Are you is that Mm -hmm. what you really want me to do? But take time to listen to him because he's got good stuff to say to you. Especially mm-hmm. when you're down, you discourage, you, you know, you just like, you know what, I'm sick of all this. You raise up your hands up. God's got amazing things to say to you in those moments and those times where you take a minute, a moment just to listen to him. He will give you peace in the storm. He will quiet your spirit. He'll give you a song in your heart, whether you can sing or not. He will just. Yes just really really come come through show up and show out in your heart so yes yes and those nights when you can't sleep god is saying wake up that's what it is he just want to talk to you just want to talk to you (laughs) he just want to talk to you he just want to talk to you like you've been putting everything before him all day long mm-hmm. and he, you haven't made time for him. So he was like, you know what? I'm going to disturb your sleep because, and I got this from Jerry Flowers. He said, because what you're doing has disturbed me. So now I'm going to disturb you while you're trying to sleep. Oh, I have not heard that. Oh my goodness. I've heard that, that he deep. wants to talk to us when he can get us still, but not what we have done has disturbed him. So he's going to disturb us. Wow. Yes. That's good yes. stuff. Yeah, so we have uh, this thing called mislabel insomnia. It's not insomnia. It's not insomnia. That's God trying to talk to you. That's God. God. <laughs> Can we hear now? No. Nope. It says that you're connecting to okay, audio. You Can you hear me now? Yay! How y'all doing? Good. Evening, Elder. How you guys doing? Excuse the technical difficulties. That's all right. right. That's all right. I don't know how to get rid of the extra screen, but you know what? We're just going to leave it alone. Okay. I ain't going to touch nothing, I I promise. Just leave it alone. Well, thank you so much. So we're going to, I guess we could have given a quick introduction while you was doing all that, but Elder Tadron Trader, I have been knowing him for years and years and years. And yeah, uh, gosh, we met when we were teenagers um, in Mattsville. <laughs> <laughs> Ain't that something? Yes. And um, I know a lot, well, I know a lot about his his past, his history, his story. I'm, he's going to tell it tonight, what, whatever God leads him to tell. But just um, he's an elder. He um, attends a living work community church. And it's just ironic that you know, we never would have thought that we would be serving in ministry together. And it's been such an honor since he's joined Living Word mm-hmm. um, to serve in ministry together. So we're just excited. And bro, we just want you to um, let God have his way. You know, we sent you the questions. And the first question that we always ask is, what was that defining moment that brought you to Christ? What caused you to give your life to the Lord? And then you can just go from there. Okay. Um, ironically, the defining moment happened. I was going to church with Pastor Sally Heath at the time at House of Refuge Deliverance Center. And she traveled to North Carolina, I believe, to preach. And I remember this because I had just brought a brand new Jeep Liberty. And Mm -hmm. um, I I wanted to stretch it out, as they say. So I I took my my truck and I said, well, I'm going to drive. And on the way there, the Lord began to deal with me um, about my life. Um, He began to talk to me about a lot of the things that I was doing that he didn't like. And Mm. it scared me a little bit because at the time I was ministering, but I still was doing things that was contrary to the word of God. I was living 
um, as they say, a double life. And we know that the Bible says that a double man, a double minded person is unstable in all of his ways. And it's, it was like the Lord, it, you know, it was like uh, the Damascus experience. It was like the Lord showed me everything about me that he didn't like. Wow. And it wow. was, it was scary. But it also, that night in the hotel room, once I checked into my hotel room, because ironically, I had my own room. I didn't share a room with anyone. And once I checked into my hotel room, I sat there for a few minutes and I just listened at God. And I listened at what God was saying to me and it opened my eyes. And the one thing the Lord told me, he says, now that you've been delivered, if you go back, I'll kill you. Ooh. Ooh, and I God. thought, but God, you know, that's, that's harsh, you know. But the Lord said, I cannot allow you to go back into sin. Mm -hmm. Wow. He said, Once you've been delivered, I can't allow you to go back into sin. He said, but the one thing I want you to do is I want you to tell your testimony. And don't be ashamed to tell your testimony because you have been delivered. Mm -hmm. And I remember that day because the next day, Pastor, he preached. But the, that Sunday, they broke us up into sessions, into a men's session. Um, and it was just me and a couple of the other brothers that were there with us and some other people that was there. And they gave me room to tell my testimony. How mm -hmm. ironic, right? Wow. How God. ironic has opportunity to tell my testimony around people that I didn't know. I never met them before. And I began to tell them how the Lord delivered me on my way there. Mm -hmm. And it was a young man who was dealing with the same type of stuff that I was dealing with. And he said, wow. I never knew that I, that my life could change and that I could get out of this. Wow. And I told him, I said, well, with God, all things are possible. And it's funny because I didn't remember a lot of this until today. Mm. I sat back and I thought about it today and I was like, what was that defining moment that led me to really want to live for Christ? Because I mean, you know, I've told you guys before how I lived you know, I was always a church boy. You know, I was always in church, mm -hmm. always going to church, always, you know, tearing people's churches up. Tearing John, you know, you remember days. those days, <laughs> tearing the churches down. Yes. But I was living a life that was contrary to the word of God. You mm -hmm. know, I was double minded. I, I had the church act, if you know what uh, I mean. Yeah. I knew how to act church. Yes, I knew how to sing. I knew how to Mm -hmm. I knew how to perform, you know, but I had no power. My God. I had no anointing. Mm. I had no nothing. You know, it was all a form of godliness, you know, but there was no power nowhere. And I did it so much till it became my You know, I mm. go to church, I sit on the back row, and I shout and because the next person around me started saying hallelujah. So because they said hallelujah, I shout. Or because somebody sang, sang my song, or as as they um, as they say, "Don't hit my key, you hit my key." I shout because it was routine. <laughs> you know what I mean? It was nothing. Yes. I had no anointing. I, I felt nothing, and I went through this over and over and over and over again. Mm. You know, and it was just like a normal for me. After a while, it became my normal. That became what I did. Everybody knew me as the, the little boy who shouted all the time. And then it was funny because someone told me, oh, you're going to be a preacher one day. And I was saying to myself, you don't know, but when I leave here, I'm going to smoke a cigarette. Woo! When I walk out this door, I might smoke a blunt. You don't know hmm? what I might do. That's real, though. That's real. Right. That. It's real. And it's funny because I see people now. They'd be tearing the churches up and then still thinking outside, they light up. I'm like, yep, yeah, that was me. And mm -hmm. I, I, I know how I feel now. When I see them doing it, I was like, God sakes. But I wonder if somebody felt like that when I was doing it. Wow. You know, yeah. You know, that, could my life really change someone <laughs> because they saw me in church shop and now they see me out here cussing up? 
because that's what I did. You yeah. know, I, I I was famous for that. You know, I was famous for getting around work around my friends and that, and doing things that they were doing. They were cursing, I was cursing. They were smoking, I was smoking. You know, I was never a drinker, but if you gave me a wine cooler, that was my drink. I drank, you know. Mm -hmm. But, you know, the Lord had to really do a lot of work with me. And when I went to North Carolina that Sunday with Pastor Heath, or that weekend with Pastor Heath, my whole life changed. Wow. And it changed in a dramatic way because when I came back, I was not the same person that went. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I mean, because I was sleeping with men. I was sleeping with I was sleeping with anybody that would let me sleep with. And I didn't have no no care, no scare. I wasn't scared of anything. I wasn't scared of AIDS. It was there, but I wasn't I wasn't worried about it. I did it, you know. And and it's funny because someone said to me not long ago, how could you live a life like that and now say that you're delivered? <laughs> Do you know the God I serve? Hey, hey, that's hey. the kind of God we that's serve. Right. Yes. Right. Do, you, do you know yeah. the God I serve? I mean, it's funny because I walked around day after day and I lived, I lived a homosexual lifestyle. Mm. That was my lifestyle. That's what I did every day, all day, and didn't care who knew it. I didn't care, you know. Mm -hmm. I didn't. I wasn't worried about what people said about me. I was bullied all through school, trying to, you know, this to be true. I yep. was bullied all through school because of my lifestyle. Yeah. Because of the lifestyle that I chose, yeah. I chose to, you know, live like this. I chose to do this, and I had no cares, no worries. I didn't. You say what you want about me. I'm gonna go sleep with who I want to sleep with mm -hmm. because that's what I did. You know. I can remember, um, it's funny because I was working at Purdue um, for the short while that I worked there. <laughs> <laughs> I was at Purdue and I was dating one of the maintenance men there. And one night he put a gun to my head. What? He Whoa. put a gun to my head what? and told me if I ever told anybody what we did, he would kill me. Wow. And I said, wow. You out here doing everything you're big and bad enough to do, but you can put a gun on me. And he he was much bigger than I was, you know, but you're going to use a gun, you know. But I wasn't scared. I just went and told my sister. And I told my sister what happened. She went and dealt with it. Mm -hmm. And I didn't worry about it no more, you know, because that's mm -hmm. what I did. I, somebody messed with me. I went and I told my sister. But it was like the Lord, the Lord really had to work on me. And I and I tell anyone who's dealing with this lifestyle, because it is a strong, strong demon. Yeah. And that's just what it is. Yeah. It is a demon. And it's strong because it don't just come with a homosexual demon. It comes with many demons. Wow. Mm. because it comes with the demon of lying you you have to lie about everything mm -hmm. you know you can't tell the truth about nothing you mm -hmm. lie about everything you know it i i was stealing at one time i was doing everything i did a whole lot of stuff wow. but i can honestly say but god you know Ooh, but, uh, mm, but, but god uh, you know mm -hmm. that on that trip to north carolina God did something inside of me, and I'm shaking now because I'm thinking about it. But God did something inside of me that, that weekend that I could not have done in the whole 20 some years of my life at that time. Wow. You no, know? because I kept trying to stop on my own. You know, mm -hmm. I didn't I didn't necessarily want to do this. I didn't want to, you know, I wanted to stop. I wanted to quit. But I couldn't stop because the demons were so strong. I remember one night I was at work and I had just got promoted to sergeant the first time. And um, I was working the midnight shift and I would watch the demons run from cell to cell. They were running from oh, wow. cell to cell. They would jump from this cell to that cell. And I watched them one night and the Lord, he even then the Lord started dealing with me, but I didn't want to hear it mm. because I was comfortable in my lifestyle. 
I felt like this, this is my, and ain't nobody got no business. And, I, and here's the lie from the devil, y'all. Here's the lie. This is my life, and ain't nobody got business with me. Mm -hmm. <laughs> that was the lie from the devil because what the Lord began to do with me, what he began to show me is that my lifestyle is going to help somebody else mm -hmm. if I change. Yes. 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 Notice I said, if I change. That yes. my lifestyle would help somebody. So it it happened, and I, you know, I, I, like I said I felt comfortable. I felt like, you know, <laughs> who cares? Who knows about me? You mm -hmm. know. And and then I used this one too, where they talk about Jesus. I used mm -hmm. that one a lot. Mm -hmm. <laughs> that was my favorite go to, where they talk about Jesus. Let them talk about me. I'm no better than Jesus. But I wasn't living like Jesus. Mm. I wasn't, I mean, yeah, I was being persecuted, but I wasn't being persecuted for Jesus. Right, mm. right. Uh -huh. You know, and it's a big difference. Um, but that day, when that young man, when I told my testimony how the Lord dealt with me, that young man, he was sitting there. And funny, because he was on the praise team. That day, he told me, he says, I'm coming off the praise and worship team until I get right. Woo! Thank God. That's Woo. And that's when I yeah. first realized that God really wanted to use me. Now, mind you, let me help somebody. I was a preacher. I was a minister. Wow. I was still preaching, but yeah. I was living a crazy lifestyle. Wow. Mm. Mm. I wow. mean, and, and at that time, I really thought I was doing something, y'all, because I was getting invitation after invitation, and I'm going here, and I'm going there. I'm doing this conference. I'm doing that conference. I'm preaching for this one. I'm preaching for that one, but I'm not living two cent worth of nothing. Ooh. Mm -hmm. I'm doing all of this thing, and I'm doing it in Jesus' name, and had I died, he would say, depart from me, you workers of iniquity. Ooh. I never knew. Mm. Ooh, my God. Mm, mm, mm. Mercy. And, Mercy. And can you imagine you going into church and you got two faces? Mm. You got a church face and you got a Been home there. face. Done that. Yes. You know, yeah. I walked in and, and it's funny because Pastor he seen it. She saw it. Wow. And one day she pulled me in her office. This was before we went to North Carolina. She pulled me in her office. Someone had told her something that I did, and I knew I did it. She knew I did it. You know, she pulled me in my in her office. She was like, um, "You know, I'm not having this." And anybody know Pastor? You know, she's straight from the hip. She cut no corn. <laughs> yeah, yeah. She gonna give it to you. She was like, "You know, I'm not having this. I'm not. I'm not gonna have you in my pulpit." And you you live in a gay life. I'm not doing that. Mm. And I got angry at the person that told him. I'm like, how you gonna tell him he was supposed to be my sister? You supposed to be my friend. She mm. said, that's why I told him because I'm your sister and your friend. Mm. Yep. Mm. Yes. 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 Faithful or it, it took a real yeah. person, you know. It took a real person to do that. But when I went to North Carolina at that time. I remember it so well, you know, because I remember that I said, this has got to be how Paul felt, you know, mm. on the road to the mass. This, this has got to be how he felt because mm. it was like the Lord just began to show me things, show me my lifestyle. He showed me everybody that I had been with. He showed wow. me how mm -hmm. I came. because one of the persons that I was with, come to find out, had HIV. Wow. But it never, oh, it never came to me. I know. Wow. But this particular person that I had HIV, you know, I never got it. God shielded me from that. Thank he God. protected me. Thank God. Through all of that, Ooh, God protected God. me. You mm. know, I never even had a scare of Praise HIV. God. Through that whole mm. time, I never had a scare. Praise you know, God. and don't get me wrong. There are times when the enemy tries because the enemy knows what you like or what you like. 
And he yeah. will always try to present it to you and make you think that it's better. You know, as, a, as old folks say, make you think that the grass is greener on the other side. We all know. Yeah. We all know what, what the grass looks like on the other side. The grass is dead. It's brown. Mm. Ain't no green grass on the other side. Mm. But we all think, you know, oh, I, I can get like this. And that's why it bothers me when I see people in church. <laughs> They're in church Sunday after Sunday doing everything they're big enough to do, but you living like this? Mm -hmm. And I know that if God told me that he wasn't pleased with me, right, what makes you so good that you're going to make God happy when you're doing the same thing that I was doing uh -huh. that he told me he didn't like? My exactly. God. Uh -huh. mm -hmm. You know, that's why some people I don't even support anymore. Uh -huh. I don't care if you're uh -huh. off of a giant building. I'm not going to come and support you because I know what the Lord delivered me from. Yes. And the same yes. God that delivered me is able to deliver you. Yes. You yes. Evil. I mean, the thing is, we've got to want change Ooh. to come in our life in yes. order for God to really change us. You know, you can sit back and sing, change me, oh God, all you want to. <laughs> But if it ain't in your heart, You ain't never going to change. Mm -mm. Mm -mm. And I told the Lord, I said, well, God, if you give me a platform to speak, I'll tell everybody. I don't care where I go. I don't care who I go to preach for. Everybody's going to know that I am delivered. Hallelujah. I'm set free. I'm not like the man. That, Praise the Lord. I'm delivered. I'm delivered, but he really wasn't. Mm. Yes. I'm not that man. <laughs> yeah. That ain't me. No. I can honestly say That I am, that God has changed my life. You know, you know. I, I mean, I look at things totally different now. Mm. You know, before when I was out there, I had a lifestyle where I lived moment by moment. Mm -hmm. You know, it was like I'm okay. I'm okay now, but tomorrow, <laughs> who knows? Mm -hmm. But today, I can honestly say I'm living by grace. Yes. Yes. Thank yes. God. I'm living by grace, yes. grace that yes. God has given me. You know, mm. don't get me wrong. I don't have a perfect life. There are times I mess up. Yeah, I'll be the first one to say I mess up sometimes. But thanks be unto God that I don't stay in it. I know mm. how to call on a God that is able to deliver me out of everything that I'm going through. Yeah. Mm -hmm. You know, even even there are times when I ask God, God, am I really delivered? Mm -hmm. Have I really been changed? And the Lord, he'll, he'll show me that yeah, I have yeah. been delivered yeah. yeah, and that I have changed because I can go around those same people now and feel nothing for them. Mm. Yes. Absolutely nothing. Mm. Well, I mean, what kind of God would he be if he delivered me and then allowed me to go around the people that I had, a, that I had problems with and then I feel the same thing? What kind of God would he be? Exactly. Not That's the powerful true. one we're talking about. Exactly. Not not the kind of God that we're talking about. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. You know, I grew up in a home where, you know, it was a single mom. And I used to use that as an excuse. You know, I had a single parent. All I had mm -hmm. old mama, da, 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 da. All the lies from the devil. Because mm -hmm. I know a lot of single parents that kids did not grow up this way. Yep. That, I mean, they didn't, but that, that was my, that was my, my way of dealing with it. You know, I can remember a time when I wanted to kill myself. Mm, wow. I had picked out the tree because I didn't like the lifestyle I was living. You know, I didn't like how I was living. I had picked out the tree, the tree right on the corner of the road that I lived on. So I said, well, all I got to do is go by my house keep going at about 60 to 70 miles per hour and hit that tree dead on, right? Ooh. That was That's how I was going to do it. Wow. I wasn't going to take no pills. I wasn't going to shoot myself. I wasn't going to hang myself. Mm -hmm. I was going to ride right into that tree right on the corner, right? Mm. That I had picked up the gate and everything, y'all. And how about wow. they cut that tree down? <laughs> What? How about they cut the tree down? 
because the Lord That's told the kind me of God we serve. Yes, sir. You can't stop this. I did. I started the work in here. Mm. You can't oh, stop now, this. Jesus. Mm. I'm gonna perform it until the day of Jesus. I'm gonna be the one. <laughs> you can't kill yourself. Oh, oh, my God. God. Don't try to kill yourself. You gonna try to abort the mission? Who do you think you are? Who do you Ooh. think you are? Mm. I told him I don't, I don't deserve this life. I don't deserve this. God said, who else deserves it then? You're mm. my son. You're my child. I'm never going to see you out, but you got to change. Yes. Yes, yes, yes. The Lord told me, he said, you got to change. And if there's anybody out there dealing with homosexuality, I want you to hear me good. The change has to begin with you. Yes. It has to begin with you. Not that you are so great or that your name is so great or that, you know, you want somebody to call your name because that's not why I did this. I didn't change right. so somebody could call me great or so somebody could call my name. That's not why I changed my lifestyle. The lifestyle that I was living, I knew wasn't pleasing to God. So that's why I changed my lifestyle. Mm -hmm. And it was like the more I got into the word of God and the deeper I began to learn about the word of God, the more I realized I really got to change. Yeah. Because it didn't happen overnight. Let me let me be honest now. It did not happen overnight. Mm -hmm. It wasn't one of those things, you know, yeah. that, that I snapped my finger and it was done. It didn't happen make overnight. That, make that plain because a lot of people think that they have this experience and they fall all out on the floor or they've mm -hmm. had this moment with God and they think, bam, 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 I am mm -hmm. the holiest of holy. I am the cleanest of clean. I am the, the whiter than snow. I have nope. no more issues. Mm -hmm. I, I don't think evil. I don't hear mm -hmm. evil. I don't see evil because now I am, you know, God's mm -hmm. God, you know, and they forget that. It's a process. It's a process. It's a process. process. Yes. That's the key it's word, done. process. Mm -hmm. And and the thing of it was, when I came home was really when the work began. Because while I was there, all God told me to do was tell my testimony. But when I came home, I had to work. Ha. Mm -hmm. I had to put in the work. Yes. yes. Because yes. there were a lot of people that knew me. And I mean, if you can go anywhere... Yeah from Cape Charles to Delaware and you're going to find somebody that knows me. Yeah, mm. It's mm. just straight like that. I mean, I'm, I'm well known, you know, but people know me because of church. Mm. <laughs> they know me because mm. of my antics in church. Mm -hmm. Right? Mm -hmm. So that's all people knew of me. They didn't know me, the me that had been delivered. <laughs> you know, they knew me the one way in church and the next way outside of church. Mm -hmm. But the work began when I got home ah. and when I got around my friends mm. and when I got around, you know, my classmates and, you know, people, because I was going to school at the time around people that knew me, you know, people at ECI, they knew me, you know, they, even at work, they didn't know my lifestyle because I was careful not to present my lifestyle at work. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. Because I didn't want them thinking that I was sleeping with an inmate or, you know, anything foolish like that. Yeah. yeah. So I was careful. But even at work, I was living a double life at work. Mm -hmm. Ain't that crazy? Mm. So we do. But that lifestyle makes you that way. It makes you ashamed to be who you really are. Now, don't mm -hmm. get me wrong. You got some people that are gay, that are very flamboyant. Yeah. Yep. And True. very comfortable with True. their lifestyle. But let me help you. They're really not. Wow. Right. They're really not. Wow. It's, a, it's, it's what they want you to believe. Mm -hmm. They want mm -hmm. you to believe that I'm, oh, I'm, I'm living my best life. You know, mm. they snapping their fingers and, you know, flipping their head. And some even put weave in, trying to make themselves somebody that they're not. Mm -hmm. Trust me, I know all of them. 
I, because every one of those people was who I was. <laughs> mm. I did everything but the right here. Okay? Mm. Let's just be totally real. I did it all. Mm-hmm. I did everything but the fake hair because I said one thing I'm never going to do is I'm never going to change my appearance. Yeah. Because I, I believe that God didn't, you know, you, you hear people say, well, God made me this way. You're a lie. You're a mm-hmm. lying wonder. God did mm-hmm. not do this. Mm-hmm. Why would he yeah. say he hates you? But then you say that God did this. You lie. Yes. Tell it. You a lie. Mm-hmm. God didn't do this. Stop blaming God for your for what you wanted. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. That's what you want. Yeah. Yep. Blame God for this. And I did. I blamed God. I, I for one at one point, you know, I'm like, God, why are you make me like this? Oh. Why you do this to me? God mm-hmm. said, I ain't do nothing to you. You did this. You did this to I me. told you I don't like it. Mm-hmm. I mm-hmm. told you I hate it. He hates it. That's right. That's right. So you talking about why I did this to you? I didn't do nothing to you. You did this. Now you got to do the work to get your life right. Mm. And it and like I said, it didn't happen overnight. It really didn't. It took me, gosh, before it was all the way out of my system, years mm. from that moment. At least five years from that moment when it was mm. completely out of my system. Mm-hmm. And what, what happened was I moved away. I moved to Princess Anne where I lived in. And that's when my life began to change. Really change. Like, because wow. it, it, God had to move me away from everything and everybody that I was comfortable around. That's why mm-hmm. that was one of the reasons I never wanted to go back to Virginia. I was getting ready to bring that up. Yeah. I said, that probably right. explains why you said you didn't want to come back. Yeah, that yeah. was one of the reasons yeah. why. And, and the other reason was I was ashamed of the people because I always say, well, the only, only people they're going to know, only person they're going to know from me is the gay Tehran. Mm-hmm. You know, that's the, they're not going to know me saved. They're not going to know me delivered. They're mm-hmm. not going to know me set free. They're not going to know me as a husband. Mm-hmm. You know, they're going to think, oh, this is a facade. This is something that he want everybody to believe, but it's not. This mm-hmm. is my life. And I love it. Mm-hmm. I love it. You know, I thought then that I was doing something great, you know, because I'm in church. I'm doing this. I'm doing that. I'm doing the other. And I'm happy, right? Mm-mm. I was not happy. Y'all. Mm. I was far from happy. So you mean to tell me that getting the title of minister didn't change your life? Getting, you know, because this is what people think. They think if they get this title, the title is is going to make them different. If I can just become a minister, if I could just become an elder, then I would, but that's, 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 you mean that didn't do it for you? Nope. (laughs) Absolutely not. And if it didn't I do it for you, it's not going to do it for anybody else. That's right. Not, exactly. If it ain't That's not how this works. That's not how this works. That's not how any of this works. <laughs> it don't work that way. No. And it's funny because, you know, that you brought that up, Lydia, because somebody said, um, you, you were doing that even as a preacher? Yes. Mm-hmm. Yes. 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 I was preaching. And, you know, that's why, you know, if you hear me say, I messed up since I've been holding this mic, that's what I'm talking about. Mm-hmm. Mm. that's what I'm talking about because mm-hmm. even preaching the word of God I'm talking y'all traveling up and down the highways from North Carolina because the same person that um, invited Pastor Heath to come and preach invited me back a few years later to do their conference and I'm still the same gay man mm. wow. Wow. Mm. wow people forget that preachers are people too and exactly. when there's a preacher that falls out, they have a big old, oh my God, oh my God. Preachers need just as much prayer as everybody. As, they need as much prayer as the people they pray for. And exactly. then some, because they're but see, then I didn't have enough sense to set myself down at first. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. I didn't have enough sense to set myself down. But then a prophet, a prophetess came to town and she called me out and mm-hmm. she didn't embarrass me. You know, she didn't put my business on front street. Ah. 
But she mm-hmm. called me out and she said, there's some stuff in your life that God really ain't happy with. Mm. I can even tell you her name, Prophet Shalita Lorraine. She was at Bishop, um, um, God, what is his name? In Northern. She Northern. she had mm-hmm. came to Bishop Northern Church for a revival. And um, she was there and she called and she put me out the audience. I was sitting there. I'm telling you, I was so nervous that this woman, because she was so on point with these people. I'm like, please don't let her call me. Please don't let her call me out. Mm-hmm. You're like, please don't just go by me. You know? And ironically, she walked by me the first time and she didn't bother me. She looked at me, but she didn't say anything to me, right? Mm-hmm. She walked back by me on her way back up to the pulpit and she said, I cannot sit down until I talk to you. Wow. Mm-hmm. And she told me, she said, there are some things about your lifestyle that God is not pleased with. She said, and I could tell you what those things are, but you know what they are. My God. Mm-hmm. She said, God is already she said, and where you think you are anointed to preach, yes, God has called you to preach, but you are not anointed yet. Mm. Woo. She wow. said, and don't think wow. because you're preaching and people are getting saved that they're getting saved by you because it's not you. Mm, 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 mm. Now, can you imagine Please. knowing what she's talking about, right? Yeah. And she and I, we stay in touch with it today. We're each other even today. Wow. Even today. Because it was a life changing moment for me. Mm-hmm. Because at that point was when everything began to turn around. She told me, and, and I'm just gonna tell you a little bit of what she said. She said, On your way here, you almost died. She said, but it was the hand of God giving you a second chance. Wow. She said that was a truck that almost ran over you. And at the stoplight, the truck had went around me to miss me. <gasps> he slammed on brakes and went around me so that he wouldn't hit me in the back. Wow. Trucks don't even move that fast because they're right. too big. Wow. Right. He went around me. He slammed on brakes and went around me mm. so that he wouldn't hit me. She wow. said, but that was the hand of God. That was the grace of God. God wants to use you. Mm. And I'm like, God wants to use me. You know what I mean? Who am I talking about it? Why God want to use me? You know, you know what we say, right? All that. <laughs> yeah, mm-hmm. all that. Who I don't know. God ain't gonna use me. <laughs> you know. And that's what I do. Okay. I'm gonna keep on preaching. I'm gonna keep on is I'm going to keep on singing. I'm going to keep on shouting. I'm going to keep on because God is pleased with my life. So I don't know who she thinks she is. Hey! Mm. Mm. Right? Yep. <laughs> and then one day the Lord really, really hit me in the face. Bam. You got to come up around these people that you're comfortable with. Yeah. These people that you are so used to living this facade around. Mm. You know, I got mad with Pastor He left her church, right? Y'all listen how crazy this is. I got mad with her because she was preaching on homosexuality. I get up and get mad because I think she's preaching about me. What? Wow. <laughs> left her church. Talk bad about her, y'all. I'm telling you, I talk so bad about her and her ministry. I went to mm. another pastor and talked about her. To this other pastor. Wow. And the other pastor told me, like, hold up, I know her. I'm not gonna let you do that. Thank God. Thank God he spoke. Her. Yeah, who, whoever that was, I'm right. glad they spoke up because I was getting ready to say, wait a minute, they shouldn't even let you go that far. But okay. Yeah. He, <laughs> pastor Sam Smith. Oh, okay. Yeah, he told me he said, uh, I'm not gonna let you do that. Mm-hmm. I know her. Mm-hmm. Like, I'm not gonna let you do that. Mm-hmm. And then I was like, okay. So I stayed with him for a year, you know, but I wasn't comfortable, you know, because the Lord was dealing with me about my lifestyle. I wasn't comfortable. I, I just wanted to preach, you know, I just wanted to preach. You wanted to preach. Right. I want somebody to know me. This uh-huh. is minister, Teron Trader. 
Mm-hmm. When I go places and they be like, Brother Tehran, uh uh-uh, uh, excuse me, that's the minister. Mm. Wow. Because okay. it was all about, like you said before, a title. Mm-hmm. It was a title. It was no lifestyle because I wasn't living right. <laughs> I wasn't. Mm. I just wanted the title of minister. And he he wouldn't. He wouldn't ordain me. He wouldn't ordain me. Mm-hmm. And I and I I got mad with him because I'm like he lied to me. He told me that I was gonna be ordained and I was gonna be a minister under his church. Da, 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 da. But it didn't never happen. And then here I am. Why I keep driving all the way back and forth to Hancock every week, and I'm doing this three four times a day. This is a lie, y'all. Hmm. <laughs> Yes. Yeah. But then the Lord had to really show me Virginia is not where I want you at mm. this moment. Right? Because I'm in Virginia now. Yes. I live in Princess Anne, but I go to church in Virginia. But at that moment, God said, No, you're not strong enough to deal with what's here. Yeah. Mm. So let me move you to a place where you can deal with life. Mm-hmm. I'm going to put you around some people God, that so can help you. Yeah, that was a lot of hurt. Mm-hmm. I'm not going to say that it wasn't. Mm-hmm. Because even in Princess Anne, I, I encountered a lot of hurt. But I, I brought that hurt on mm-hmm. us. That was self-hurt. It had nothing to do with, with the people. That was hurt that I put myself in. But mm-hmm. like when God really changed my life, I've been in Princess Anne's uh, December the 18th, 2010. So that's almost 10 years. Yeah. And in mm-hmm. that in that time that I've been here, God really, really changed my life. And I'm happy about it. Mm-hmm. You know, I used to say when I was, you know, living that lifestyle that I was happy. I don't care what nobody says. I'm happy living like this. I don't care. You know, I don't mm-hmm. care, but I really do. Right. You wouldn't believe how many nights I cried myself to sleep. And then I woke myself up crying. Mm-hmm. I would go to sleep crying, wake up crying. Because I wasn't pleased with me. I knew that there was so much more inside of me. Mm-hmm. When I was ordained as an elder under Pastor Mark Thomas, I saw my whole life change from that moment. Really. Like, you know, the old, old, old saying, things I used to do, I don't want to do them no, no, no more. Places mm-hmm. I used to go, I don't want to go no more. I really didn't want to do those things anymore. I had no desire. And mind you, this was about maybe five years after I had went to North Carolina with Pastor Heath. Wow. Mm. Yeah, it was mm. about five years after that. Because I, I felt like, you know, I felt like people were always going to see me as that person. You mm-hmm. know, they're not going to see me as someone who's different. They're only going to see me as that gay guy. Mm-hmm. That's why I was like, oh, I'm never going to I don't mm-hmm. care what nobody said. You could drag me kicking and screaming. <laughs> I ain't going back to Virginia because them people always want to put you in bondage. Mm. That's what I said about y'all Virginia folks. John. <laughs> so y'all want to put me in bondage. Y'all want to take me back to the way I used to be. But the reality was, had I known this, I probably would have ran back to Virginia. That my my real life was back in Virginia. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Because when I first got married, Karen would tell you, you can't persuade me to go back to Virginia for nothing in the world. I don't care if your daddy is the bishop. (laughs) (laughs) That's how I felt, y'all. I felt like I don't care if your daddy is the bishop. I'm not going back there. Them people Mm -hmm. know me. They know all about me. 
They know my ins, my outs, my shortcomings, my downfalls. They never saw me on the upright. The only person they ever saw was old man to mm-hmm. They don't know. They don't know me, you know. And I remember, I think it was John that invited me to preach at the singles conference one time. Yeah. And I was like, oh, okay, I'll go. And in the back of my mind, I was scared to death. And mind you, I was the different man, y'all. I'm really saved now. <laughs> you know, you know, it ain't no fake in this. One. Butterflies, I was really saved. But that don't take the butterflies away, though. Just because you no, really. No, it doesn't. <laughs> It don't say sex. But that. I get what he's saying. His butterflies came from a different place. I exactly. get what he's saying. Yeah. Exactly. Yeah. Nope. Because my yeah. butterflies came from a place where they knew who I was, but they don't know who I am. Yeah. Right. And I was like, but God, how do I prove to these people that I'm not that person? God said, you don't. I do. Mm. Right. Mm. I said, you ain't Mm -hmm. you gotta prove it to me and let me prove you that's what I think a lot of people need to understand you don't have to prove anything to man Mm -hmm. you gotta prove your life to God and God will show man who you really are because Mm -hmm. it wasn't until I really really stopped living the life of a liar when God really began to open up doors for my ministry. I've gone places now that I've never gone before. Mm -hmm. I preached for some of the greatest preachers. I was never able to do that before. You know, I thought because I preached a conference here or I preached a youth Sunday there or preached an anniversary here that I was really doing something. Mm -hmm. When I gave it over to Christ Mm -hmm. and, and the, you know, when they say that he will open doors that no man can open, let me help y'all. Yeah. God did this. Mm-hmm. What you see in front yeah. of you, you don't see anything that happened on my own account. What you see is a changed man changed by Christ. Hallelujah. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. That's the Lord. Mm-hmm. What you see is someone who laid before God and pleaded to God to change him. That's why Tamla Man's song changed me, oh God. That hits home with me. Mm-hmm. Because I know exactly what she's talking about because I laid before God long before Tamla said change me. Mm-hmm. I asked God to change me long before she wrote those words to that song. I pleaded yeah. with God, God, I want to be more like you. I want to walk like you. I want to talk like you. I want to breathe like you. Mm. You know, mm-hmm. I want to be so close to you that when you move, I know where you are. Mm-hmm. That's what I told the Lord. And mm-hmm. then God sent me the wife mm-hmm. that I needed. Mm-hmm. Am I making sense? Yes. He sent me what yes. I needed to, come, to let me know that the change had really happened. Mm-hmm. Oh, mm-hmm. yeah. Oh yeah. Because I tried to date others. I mean, there were times I tried to date, you know. <laughs> None of them worked out, y'all. <laughs> As we can see. <laughs> None of them worked out. Exactly. One, let me tell you, one time one was so crazy that she thought she was literally gonna move in my house. No. Oh wow. <laughs> You're not moving in my house. She had started bringing her clothes. Piece by piece. <laughs> I lost your mind. Anybody That's tell bold. me who I'm particular about my house? That's bold. Yes. Yes. Y'all know. I'm yes. particular. No, baby, you got the wrong mm-hmm. one. You're not staying here. You can go and start taking your clothes right back out the door. <laughs> and I, you know, it was funny because I even went to God. I said, God, is she really the one? Because, you know, I started noticing her things were starting to be there more and more. I mean, God, is she really the one? The Lord said, absolutely not. <laughs> he said, absolutely not. I'm like, but God, you see, she, God, do you see? God said, yep, yeah, I see. Do you mm. see? Mm. And I was like, oh. And then three months later, she came up, but not by me. 
Wow. Wow. Right. <laughs> so, you know, and that, and that was something that really hurt, but it didn't rock my world. It didn't shake me, but it hurt. Mm-hmm. You know, but then God sent me that one person that he designed just for me. Mm. She mm-hmm. didn't care what people said. Yep. She didn't care what they talked about. She didn't care about, she had an answer for that. Yeah. And don't get me credit because, I mean, don't get me wrong. I never took advantage of the fact that she loved me. You know, mm-hmm. and I never dated her to prove anything to myself. That's not why mm-hmm. she and I was together. Right. But it was ordained by God because Karen and I were friends for 13 years. Mm-hmm. We never looked at each other differently. All we saw were friends. This is my friend. Right. This is my buddy. This is my hanging partner. And one day things changed. Mm-hmm. But little did we know that it was God doing the work. It was God. And we've had our bumps in the room like anybody else. It ain't been peaches and cream. Mm-hmm. But it's been great. Every bump has been great. Praise God. Praise God. And if anybody thinks that you cannot obtain this lifestyle, let me connect you to the person that changed me. Yes, because sir. Because I didn't do this. But it was God. It was the word of God. Yes. Yes. It was the word of God yeah, that changed yeah. this person in front of you. Mm, 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 mm. And there were wow. some nights that I would get off work and I didn't know who was going to be in my bed. I didn't know. Mm. I knew somebody was going to be there. It might have been you today. might have been somebody else tomorrow. Who knew? Mm, 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 mm. But God saved me. He gave. He made me so content with being alone, till I really didn't know what was going on between Karen and I. I never mm-hmm. saw it, you know, because I was content with being alone. I, I had told the Lord if I didn't get married by the time I was forty, I'm not getting married. Well, Isn't that funny how we put a timeline on God. That's yeah. so funny. Yeah. Well, I wasn't forty when I got married, but I was almost. I was forty-one. <laughs> <laughs> he said, psych. <laughs> Man makes his plans, but God excels them all. Exactly. Excels I guess the joke was on me. Yeah. But see, God knew, God knew who to send you, though. He knew who can handle your testimony. Right. Who can handle your past, who can handle your present, your future. He he had her, he had it ordained right. of who right. you needed. And and she just put on there, she said, and I still don't care. And she still don't care what people say. And that's God knew who you needed. Right. He knew that. Right. Come along. Stop Simba. Right. All along. All along. Wow. But I never saw it. Right. Ain't that funny? 13 years of friendship, and I never saw it. It was mm. in that moment when God took the blinders off. He took the blinders off. He kept them there so that your friendship could de- could develop. So that mm-hmm. you had something on the back end. Uh-huh. You all decided uh-huh. to start changing yeah. the way you were looking there. He started removing them blinders on. You were like, hmm, hmm. you'll be my friend for life. Right. <laughs> this girl might look, saying to myself, hmm, this might be the one. Because <laughs> I remember we were coming back from Ocean City one night. And I just began to, you know, just begin to tell Karen a whole bunch of stuff. And I don't even know why I was telling her this, y'all. And she would ask certain questions. She would ask me this question, ask me that question. But she never once judged me over it. She would just ask like little questions like, but why did you do this? Or why did you do that? Or didn't you know that this was happening? Or didn't you know that was happening? And I'm like, no, nah, I ain't know. I ain't care. You know? Mm-hmm. And and I'm sitting there and I'm waiting for the, as they say, the mic to drop, but it never did. Mm. It never did. Mm. And she, she stayed there. She, I mean, she continued to make me happy every single day. Mm. Even now, awesome. every single day, I'm happy. Praise 
Praise God. Um, I mean, I don't always feel good about things. Don't get me wrong. Mm-hmm. There are some times, and Lord knows Karen would tell you, some things aggravate me to no end. <laughs> but it's just, you know, it's my makeup. And I'll yeah, change but love, it. Com- love covers that. Love covers that. Covers that. Yeah. I mean, we all got our issues. And love helps yeah. deal with them all. You know? Yeah. But the great thing is that God gave me someone who could could care less Mm -hmm. about what happened to me or what who I used to be with, you know, just long as I ain't doing it. Mm. That's the only (laughs) thing she's concerned about. Mm -hmm. That I ain't doing it now. That's right. Deliverance. And I thank God for that. You know, that's the kind of God we serve. Yeah, that's the kind of God you serve. Yes. The God that loves us in spite of us, in spite of our past. And he don't throw our past up in our face. Mm -mm. And anybody that loves us, anybody loves us would never do that. Mm -mm. She's never, ever, ever done that. She's never, ever brought it up. Mm -hmm. I'm so one time, was she, was she my token? Mm. Mm. She asked me that one time and I had to let her know, no, you're not a token, you're my wife. Mm-hmm. That's a difference. Right. A token is someone that people parade around just for a name. Mm-hmm. Yeah, for appearances. Mm-hmm. Mm-mm. No, it's not like that. God didn't yeah. save us for that purpose. And I didn't mm-hmm. even know that God had just saved her when she came home. I didn't even know all of that. Oh, wow. Wow. So think about it. God preserved both of us, He delivered both of us for each other. Yes. Mm. Mm. Oh, oh, I love that. I love yeah. that. I think about that all the time, y'all. I think about that all the time that he delivered us for us. Mm-hmm. 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 And it's wow. not about, you know, the titles or anything mm-hmm. now because I'm like, God, you're able. I know what you can do. Mm-hmm. If you yeah. can, you know, and I told I told a young man this not too long ago at work. He's a homosexual. And he came to me. I told him, he was like, I'm tired of living like this. Yeah. I'm tired of people poking on me. And I said, well, I know the feeling. You don't mm. know the feeling. You don't know how I feel. And right then and there, the Lord allowed me to tell my testimony to this young man. Praise God. Mm. And every time I think, God, why am I here? He shows me. Mm, every single time. And, and that young man, I'm not saying that he got saved that day because he didn't. But the Bible says one waters, one plants, one waters, and mm. God gets an increase. That's right. That seed was planted. Exactly. So maybe I planted a seed in him to let him know you don't have to live like this. That's right. You know what's that song we sing? It won't always be like this. The Lord will mm-hmm. perfect that that what what concerns Him. Yes. Sooner or later, He'll turn it in our favor. Yes. Turn He's around turning around for me. for me. Yes. God did that for me, and I'm able to tell anybody that wants to know. If you want to know, was I a gay man? Yes, I was. Wow. Not I was. am. Right. I was. That's a big difference. Wow. I am is that person who's still living that lifestyle and don't want to change. I mm-hmm. was is the person that accept Christ in his life and made up in his mind that he's going to live and die for God. Wow. Yes. And yes. I tell you, make mm-hmm. up in your mind. This is a self-made thing. Tell you, make up in your mind that you're willing and ready to change from that moment on, then you will change. Not mm-hmm. before. Right. I'm glad you said that. That reminded me of something I was thinking about earlier when you were talking about God said it, um, about what God talked to you about in on your way to North Carolina and or about what the, the preacher was saying that you were going to be a preacher. God said it. You believed it, but you believed it by your actions. Mm-hmm. You don't believe it until you start walking and mm-hmm. what was said. And then that proves the belief. Noah right. didn't just hear a God telling him to build the ark. He went to work and he, and that's how he believed that what God said. 
So you proved what God said. You proved your belief in what God said by acting yes. on it, by beginning to change, by beginning to, you know, you know, turn things around and make different choices and things like that. God said it. We only we only believe it when we start acting on what he said. And then once we start acting, it settles in us. Yes. So yes. God, God said it. I believe it. That settles it. It's more, it, you know, you got to go past just that little surface piece. Exactly. God said it. I believe yeah. it when I started acting on it. And then that settled it in my spirit. Ooh, preach that, Elder. Preach that, Elder. Then I hear settled. you. Yes. And then one more thing. One more thing. One more thing. When, when that you had the opportunity to minister to that person in the, in the, in the jail. He did not even know. You did not even smell like smoke. It reminded me of the three Hebrew boys who went in the fire and they came out and they were like, yes. they, were damaged. they don't even, their hair isn't singed. They're, they're, they don't even smell like yeah. smoke. You didn't even smell like the smoke that you were in wow. when you were going through. Woo! So yes, sir. Like it. That's the kind oh. of God you serve. That's the kind of God. Obliterate your past. Mm -hmm. But you can move on into your future and to then witness and tell somebody, I was, but I'm I was. I was, I'm was that person. That's my past, but I'm, I'm, I'm not anymore. Then that, that's the kind of guy we serve. It and I'm not even ashamed to tell people. That's right. You know, you know, I'm Pastor, not even ashamed um, to tell them who I used Pastor to be and what Alvin I used Harmon. to do. Pastor Alvin Harmon said this years ago. He's he dead and gone now, but he said, I'm so glad my who was in front of my was. Wow. Man, are now is in front of who you were oh that just said I, I i that was i don't know how many years ago that was wow years, but i'm so glad my who is in front of my was and i'm just so honored and blessed by your transparency and your courage to tell your story because it is hard when people know you and then you go back and you got to minister to some of these people that knew you from before mm -hmm. i've been there i was the hoe People called me the hoe. I mean, I was my name was out there in the street because I slept with this, that, and now the other. And some of the people, I one night it was so hard for me. It was in a tent revival, and um, we were still having tent revival in Nassau as that passed at New Birth, mm -hmm. and a guy that was part of the gang rape on me was in the congregation. Wow! wow. And I was up there leading praise and worship. And when I saw him, I, I, I kind of had to stop singing for a minute. It kind of stunned me like, oh, my God. It was the wow. most awkward moment that I have ever felt in my life. But God showed me that you're not that person anymore. Mm -hmm. And when it happened, I was drunk. And so although I knew it was happening, I couldn't stop it. Right. So it made it look like I wanted it. And that right. was my name was in the street because I had had sex with three guys in one night. So my name was all circulated all over the Eastern Shore. People talked about me like a dog. But mm -hmm. I'm so glad that my who is in front of my words. I don't know yes, that person sir. anymore. And it takes courage to tell your testimony because it's going it, to, it's like, what are people going to think about me? What are they going to say? Now that I done told them my story, you know, all the stuff that I done done. But that's the beauty of it because you're helping helping somebody else and you and the fact that you can tell it you're free from it right uh, right you know you deliver when you can tell it and talk about it and don't have nothing following you behind you after you just said it you know you're free from it so i'm i'm just grateful for your courage on tonight i thank god for you i am just uh, blessed and honored and i and true saints teron elder trader true saints they're gonna see you for who you are now exactly yeah. You are not going to dwell on your past because if you're a true saint, you're walking with the mind of Christ. And if Christ don't dwell on your past, then mm. the true saints should not dwell on your past. They shouldn't either. You know, it's funny that you said that, John, because um, I was invited to preach at a local church in Virginia. And when the pastor found out it was me, they was like, oh, no, he can't come here. Wow. Hmm. Look what they and, mm. and the person that invited me came back and told me what the pastor said. Now, I looked at this person as a good friend of mine. And he was like, oh, no, he can't come here. He can't preach here. Wow. I was like, you're lost. Mm, that's right. Exactly. exactly. You're that's lost. Right. That's game, right. But you're lost. But we overcome yeah. by the blood of the lamb and the word of our testimony. Our testimony. If we don't share our testimony, how do we know we've overcome? 
Exactly. Exactly. Because the word says that. The word exactly. says that. We yes. have to share our testimony because that's how we overcome. So let me God. let me end with this. Yes. I want the world to know. I want everybody to know that I eventually mm -hmm. had to go back to Pastor Heath in front of her congregation and apologize. That's wow. good. That's good. I had to. The Lord, one day I was in my in my home, not in the in my current home, but in my, my former home, but the one before this one. And the Lord showed me her. And like, how can you say you love her when you put her name out there? Mm. And I had went there for something and she asked me to be her worship leader. I just walked in the door. I had no intentions. I want to say it was an anniversary or something. And she put me up to be her worship leader. That night. And the Lord said, now is the platform that you're going to use to apologize to her. Wow. Mm. And I had to apologize to her. It hurt me. I'm telling y'all, that was the most hurt I've ever felt in ministry because I had to apologize to her in front of everybody that I put her name out there too because Pastor Sam Smith was there preaching at night um his whole congregation was there mind you not just his congregation but people from every y'all when y'all say Sally Heath you know everybody's coming right <laughs> yeah Indy oh so yes. I had to do that in front of everybody that night I had to mm. apologize to her for putting her name out there like that. Mm. But that's that was a sign that God had really done the work in me that he said he was going to do. Mm, mm, mm. Now, don't mm. get me wrong. We're the best of friends now. You better not send up my mama's out. <laughs> you might have fight me for real. I might have to go back on the altar. <laughs> There's room at the cross for you, bro. Right. <laughs> but, I mean... True deliverance but, comes well, and you I'm know like that you've been really delivered when you have to go back and apologize to the people that you hurt. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah, mm -hmm. absolutely. Yeah. Yeah, you have to swear to your own hurt. Yeah. 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 And I was able to do that in front of everybody. And I didn't care who said what my grandma. And then I went and sat down right beside her and gave her the biggest hug and kiss. Mm -hmm. Because I meant it. And I mean it even today. Mm -hmm. Right. Mm. Mm -hmm. that. but i'm i mean i'm so grateful that you know i'm grateful first of all for that's the kind of guy we serve. because it gives a platform to people who wouldn't normally open up like this right i mean because i just wouldn't arbitrarily walk out and start telling people my testimony unless i had a reason to mm -hmm. you know and for you guys to open up this door and allow little old me to tell you about the grace of God and what he did in my life. Mm -hmm. And to show you, and you know, you guys don't just hear it, but you know that there has been change because you know me. You know, it's a right. difference if you didn't know me and I was just some Joe Blow on the street, you know, and I walked up here and telling you that I was delivered. You're like, okay, you're yeah, right. <laughs> right. But you know, and you see, you know, day-to-day -day actions and the fruit of my labor. You yeah. know, that's how you know that people can change when you see the fruit. So I'm grateful. I thank God for that's the kind of God we serve. I, I mean, that that's my testimony in a nutshell. I could tell you, you know, how it all started and all of that, but that's, that yeah. makes no sense. None of that makes sense. Mm -hmm. But I'm grateful that God allowed me to get it out again. Praise God. And can you believe I did it without even learning? <laughs> All right. All right. Yeah, I'm yeah. happy about that. I'm proud of you. Yes. He did. That shows some growth, y'all. Praise God. Because that, that was a time I would cry to get this out. I would cry. But it's such I never a wanted to tell it, feeling. you know. Yeah. It's such a liberating feeling when you know you're delivered and what God has done for you. You know, it's just yeah. It makes you smile on the inside. And you just have yeah. this joy. Yeah. Like, God, you did this for me. Like for me. Yeah. Yes. Yes. Not you because I'm great, fly. but because you great. Mm. You might not like the flour and the eggs and the butter and the sugar all by itself individually, but you mix that up and put that <laughs> in some and you and get a nice little piece of cake on out nice of that. piece of cake. It's done. Individually, you might not like the things you go through, but you put it all together, put some heat on it, let mm -hmm. God bake it up, 
It's yeah. a beautiful cake. It's a beautiful cake. Remember I told y'all about the process of cake baking. What comes yeah. out after the cake. Yes. Mm -hmm. Yep. Mm -hmm. Something nice and sweet and lovely. Yes. It's you want true. Something make you want it. Yes. <laughs> So to God be the glory. We thank God for Elder Trader. Yes, yes. Thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you, sir, for for joining us tonight. Um, if you all, I mean, he talked about some amazing things that God has done, and God is no respecter of persons, which is one of our goals is to show you to have different people from different areas, different walks you know, different beginnings and to see where God has brought them and what God has done in their life because God can do the same and the same difference. It's funny. He can do the same difference in your life. Right. He can make the same yes. difference in your life. God don't have to do the exact same thing, the exact same thing for you, but he will do the same thing for you. Does that make sense? Right. Yes. Right. He yes. don't have to do the exact same thing for you, but he'll do the same thing for you. So yes. in other words, he'll deliver you but he don't yeah. have to do the same thing that he did for other trader to deliver you. Y'all, they are popping fireworks outside my, my window, scared me to death two seconds ago. And that's why that's I had what that was. I was like, what somebody been popping stuff all day. And I'd be like, who is shooting out here? Well, now I heard that little whistle and then the pop. And I was like, you know what? I love fireworks. <laughs> I need I need a heads up. I'm sorry I went on a ramp. Talk about Jesus. But I had to tell y'all, I, I need a heads up for fireworks. I can't, you can't just spring them on me like that. It makes my heart. <laughs> my heart ain't ready. My heart ain't ready. So to God be the glory. Amen. We want yes. you to know this Jesus. We want you to know this God that we serve. We never want to end without offering um, our great God to you. If you are not walking in with God, you're walking beneath, you are living beneath your privilege. You really aren't living your best life. Mm -mm. If you are not walking with Jesus, you really are not living your best life. You might think you have a good job. You might have money. You might not. You might have people taking care of you. You might not. You might have so many things you think are lined up. You are not living your best life. You are living a setup life. That the enemy wants to keep you in to keep you away from living your best life but you can oh have god, yes. god that mm. we serve you can be free you can sleep at night you can have peace you can yes. live a life that's not miserable mm. Mm -hmm. you can live a life where you are happy and happy yes is situational so you can live a life full of joy. You can live a blessed life, blessed, happy, joyful. You can live a life that doesn't matter on what conditions are happening in your life. You can live that life that in spite of, you know that God is walking with you. You are in his arms. He is taking care of you. He is working everything out for your good because you're the called according to his purpose. He loves you without doubt. He mm -hmm. loves you whether you come to him or not. Let's say that. That's true. But how about you are walking yes. beneath your privilege by not accepting his son, Jesus, into your heart? So I invite you yes. to accept Jesus into your heart. You can, it's, and you can be anywhere. I love saying this. Jesse Duplantis said he gave his life to Jesus in a bathroom stall. You can be anywhere mm -hmm. and give your life to, you can be mm -hmm. in a jail cell, right? Heard about right, that? Yep. You can be, you know on the prostitute's bed, you can be walking the streets, you can be high, you can be drunk, you can yes, you know, be in any situation and accept Jesus as your savior. The day you hear my voice hard and out your heart, that's what he said. And he never said, I'm only gonna call you in the church house. He never said, I'm only gonna that's call right. you at a prayer meeting. He never said, I'm only gonna call you in the presence of saints. He never said that. What he said is on the day, the day you hear my voice, harden out your heart. Mm -hmm. I love how God yeah. doesn't put limitations on stuff. We put limitations on stuff. We say, well, I got to be in church. Oh, well, let me get my church clothes. Oh, well, let me get my life right. And then I'll come to God. Let me tell mm -hmm. you, if you could get your life right, you would never come to God because you can't get your life right. We need Jesus. If we could get ourselves That's right, right. i tell you what, I wouldn't sacrifice not one hair of nobody's child as if I knew that they didn't need that to get saved. Right. Why well, sacrifice if it's not needed? But God is economical and he don't waste nothing. Oh, God, preach it, Elder. 
days of <laughs> his blood of his son because we needed it. We need that cleansing. We, and we all need it. Ain't nobody born saved. That's right. Ain't nobody born holy. Ain't nobody born sanctified. We are all born in sin and shape and iniquity. That's what the yes. Bible says. Yes, God word. said that and I believe that because I walked in iniquity and now I'm saved by grace. Yes. Okay? Yes. So you can just bow your head, say, Lord, my life is a mess. Just own it. Just own it because he already knows it. Yeah. My life is a mess, yeah. but I know I need different. And I know, and I believe from what I've heard that you and only you can make this difference in my life. I might not know much about you. I might not, you know, have any history with you, God, but I believe if you're able to do it for Jonda, if you're able to do it for Lydia, if you're able to do it for Tehran, then you're able to do it for me too. You do not yes, pick and choose uh, who, oh God, but you just say, all oh, come, come unto me. All you are heavy and are burdened, heavy laden. All you are weary and are heavy laden and he will give you rest. So just yes. come. I come, I lay down my life. I give you my life. I give you my habits. I give you my issues. I give you my yes, thoughts. I give you everything that's in me. I give you my desires. Just take my life, take my life so that I don't take my life. You take my life and use it for your glory. Um, thank you for the opportunity to come and to give my life and to start my life fresh anew. Yes. Thank you for the clean sheet. Thank you for the do over. Thank you for the new start. Thank you for allowing me to know Jesus as my personal savior. I accept him into my heart and I walk with him from now on. In Jesus name I pray. Amen. Amen. That's it. Amen. If you believe Jesus, that's Amen. it. That's it. Prayer, well, welcome to the family. Yeah, welcome to the family. Get yourself in a good old Bible believing church. Read yes. your Bible. Listen yes. to some good old gospel Christian, uh, gospel rap. You know what? Because I love that God creates the gospel, it comes in all forms. It's not it's just, yes. oh, the the you know the old school it's a little new school it's a little hip hop it's a little bit of everything but long as it's the gospel and the gospel is jesus christ yes. if it's talking about jesus yes. christ it's good stuff you can listen to it but listen yes. to some and you know change your thoughts change your mind but god will do that with you just walk with jesus and he'll do it walk with yes. jesus and he'll do it because he did it for us he can do it yes. for yeah anything to you want to close up with elder white Jonda? Well, I just want to say thank you uh, again to Tehran, to Elder Trader for, you know, being so transparent and sharing his story with us. Thank you for blessing us um, with your, with your life, you know, with just, we're just honored that, that you are a part of our, you know, our church family, yeah. your brother, you know, your wife is our sister oh. and I'm just, I'm just so grateful for you and I'm so happy for you. I really am. And I, you know, I pray for you and Karen every day. Yes. Literally. I pray for all the married couples every day. And um, I'm just so grateful and to everybody that joined tonight. Thank you so much for joining us again for our seventh episode. And please join us again on July the 6th. It will be our eighth episode. It's the first Monday in July. And our guest will be Elder Tasha Banks. Latasha Banks will be our guest. So please, we will make the flyer. We will send out the invite. Please, please, please join us. And just let God bless you. Just hear what the good things God is doing in the lives of his people. And remember, when somebody asks you what kind of God you serve, what we say, that and that's the kind of God we serve. serve. Amen. To God be the glory. Good night, everybody. Amen. Love you guys. Good night, Elder. Good night. <laughs> Good night. Love you all.